Welcome to the first of four Black Guides 2 video guides. Just like its predecessor, Black Guides 2 is a tactical turn-based role-playing game with battles on Hexfield maps. After part 1 we optimized many of the game mechanics, although the basics are still the same. So we just go over these basic gameplay elements quickly before concentrating on the changes. In the Black Guard series, you are maneuvering your units turn-wise on Hexfield battle maps. Using the mouse wheel you can change the camera angle. Click on a hex field to move your unit there, to interact with an object there or to attack an enemy. Each unit can either move a long distance or only move a short distance and perform an action such as attacking or using magic. These two categories of range are displayed by using different colors to highlight the hex fields. A circle UI showing possible actions in more detail opens when you right click. Here you can choose from special maneuvers or spells to attack your opponents. These will cost you certain resources. When a unit has spent its action, it's the next character's turn. The sequence of turns is displayed in the portrait bar at the bottom of the screen. Here you can see the crucial information for every unit on the map. For every completed map, your units earn experience points, which can be used to level them up. By visiting merchants, you can buy new armor and weapons to maximize your chances in battle. During dialogues with NPCs, you have to make decisions and thereby influence the story of the game. You want to know more and haven't played Blackguards 1? Then we recommend you either catch up on that or take a look at the four Blackguards 1 guide videos you can find here on our channel. But what has changed and how will you be able to use the new features to your advantage? Let's start with the obvious. After finishing the game's tutorial, you will get access to the strategy map. Here you can choose which mission to start and which location to conquer next. In Black Arts 2, you are the commander of a small army of mercenaries. This army can only be moved along paved roads. Therefore, you have to gain access to most of the missions by conquering the nodal points of the road network. Over time, you will have more and more possibilities where to send your forces. Purple flags show that a settlement is in the hands of your opponent. Your own bases are marked in dark blue. Mouse over displays tell you how difficult a battle is going to be and what kind of rewards you are going to get. Gold, equipment or special experiences and thus special abilities for your units. More information is displayed only if you did some reconnaissance beforehand, by wisely interrogating prisoners or buying some intel from your spy Reese. Shinna breeds whole hordes of insects below the mountain. And the leapers of Ticketes have also been spotted there. This money is well spent as you will be better able to decide which road your army should take. Some locations on the map are important for the story and therefore strategically essential. They have to be conquered. Others are merely optional bonus missions. Naturally, you should conquer all of the locations on the map. This will grant you bonuses. And these villages will serve as a kind of buffer between you and your opponent, Marwan. Once in a while, he will try to reconquer one of the settlements, which will force you to defend the place using your mercenaries. But he can only attack locations that share a border with regions he is currently controlling. But more on this in a minute. Before going into battle, you always should be sure that your units are well equipped. Spend your money on new armor, potions and arrows, so you won't run out of supplies in the middle of the fight. Armor sets that consist of fitting pieces of gear will grant you a special bonus. The way you choose will, together with other factors like dialogue options, determine the course of the story in Black Arts 2, concerning little details as well as the big finale. As opposed to Black Arts 1, in the second installment you don't just have a handful of hero characters at your service, but a group of mercenaries. Altogether you can send up to 10 units into a battle, although you will have to unlock this number first. Among these 10 units, there always has to be at least one hero character. Mercenaries can be sword fighters, archers, spear fighters, and later on magicians and heavy troops like the gigantic black ogre. When starting a battle, you choose which units you want to send. If your tactics don't work out, you should perhaps try a different combination of units. Your mercenaries offer a wide variety of talents, so it's not really dramatic if you skilled your heroes in a way that doesn't seem to be fitting in your current situation, or if several of your heroes are specialized in a similar way. Problems like these can be compensated for by the mercenaries to a certain degree. By the way, you don't have to pay your mercenaries, but you won't be able to level them up the same way as your heroes either. 
Advancing your mercenaries happens by conquering certain locations. Just take a look at the mouse over displays on the strategy map. They'll show you where your mercenaries can learn which skill. Another new element is the deployment zone, where you can place your units freely when you start a new battle map. You can now choose from the highlighted hex fields where your heroes and mercenaries will start in battle. Sometimes you can unlock additional deployment zones if you did some reconnaissance beforehand. The most important thing, don't place your units in a way that will make some block the path of others. Everybody should be able to directly storm at the enemy without having to wait for the fighter before him or her. Ranged fighters and magicians should be placed in the back, spear fighters should be placed in the second rank and close combat fighters up front. By the way, archers are able to shoot over the heads of small units or those who take cover. Taking cover is another new feature. Instead of just standing around, units can now change into a cover mode, reducing hit chances for opposing ranged fighters. This works better if the unit is adjacent to an object that actually provides cover, like a crate. Taking cover or leaving cover each costs one action. But even from cover, attacks are possible. At the end of a round, the unit will get back into cover again. To better estimate your hit chances, we implemented the line of sight too. Move the cursor over a unit and hold X. Now the game displays this unit's hit chances for every hex field on the map at this moment. This is of course especially useful for ranged fighters. Every hex field that can be hit with a 100% chance is highlighted green. Black fields are impossible to hit. Between these extremes lie yellow, orange and red. You can move the cursor over the battle map as well while holding X. Then you will see a hypothetical version of the currently chosen unit on each tile the cursor is touching. New probabilities are calculated that show you where on the map this unit will have which chances to hit which enemy. This is a very handy tool to plan your tactics and to place your ranged fighters in an efficient way. Just keep in mind that they will still be quite useless in melee combat and cover them with other units. As mentioned before, your enemy Marwan will try to reconquer locations on the strategy map from time to time. When this happens, your mercenaries will have to defend them. Beforehand, you can place booby traps on these maps. You should place these in choke points. Furthermore, you can order your troops to guard certain areas. They will then stay at their posts to cover the chosen hex fields with arrows as soon as an enemy steps on them. In theory, your heroes are able to use this maneuver, but you have to unlock it first. And of course it works on regular maps as well. Heroes can be used to defend attacked maps as well, but they have to actually be at the location in question. That mostly means they are only available if the location that has been conquered last is immediately attacked. If you lose such a battle, the game is far from over. You will get a chance to reconquer the area, but it will be a tougher fight this time around. Between two missions you can always visit your base camp. There you can meet special tutors and merchants to improve your skills and gear. Furthermore, you can send out your spies and interrogate prisoners to gain more information about the strategy map and battles to come. When interrogating prisoners, it is important to choose the fitting means. Only then will you gather new intel concerning worthwhile objectives, ambushes or better starting points on battle maps. If you choose the wrong options, you will probably be misinformed, which is never a good thing in war. We've got your daughter, and although it may seem otherwise, we're not friendly people. The Great Shaper knows of no daughter. Kill me or be gone, but spare me your incessant prattling. That's it, but we're not done yet. We very much improved the Blackguard's rule system to grant a better overview and more tactical possibilities. We'll show you how that works out in detail in the next video.